Hey guys, so first of all, you've probably been wondering where I am. Well, I've not really been anywhere. I've still been living my life and getting on with things. I do apologise for not uploading and not really releasing a statement or anything like that. But plain and simple, I needed a break from YouTube. It has become too difficult for me at the moment. I've also got no source of income so I had to get a job which means YouTube wasn't really a place where I could you know support myself because I don't earn any money on YouTube and it looks like I never will after finding a few things out but I will save all that for a later video it is tied in to today's topic which is mental health and depression and yeah I've been feeling pretty depressed to the point where uh, I've started to have suicidal thoughts again. Um, not to the point where I'd want to act on them, but just more so thinking, you know, how much better it would be if I weren't here, uh, how no one would really care, all that sort of stuff. And what I wanted to do today was talk truthfully to my audience about not just my experiences, but the advice that I could possibly offer up to a younger audience watching my videos. And just as a disclaimer, I would like to say that you shouldn't take my advice and apply it to your life because it may not work. If you know someone who's depressed or you yourself are feeling depressed, please, please seek help. Talk to someone, someone that you know you can trust, whether it be your parents, a friend, a work colleague, a teacher, a psychiatrist, whoever you can, because just talking about your issues can make you feel a whole lot better, and when you talk with someone who may have also experienced the similar issues that you're going through, and then you know that it's it's not just a, a lone experience, it's not something that you go at on your own, because that's what it can feel like sometimes, you against the world, and depression is something that I'd say almost everyone in the entire world has experienced at some point in some sort of way, just some worse than others, and some get to the point where they feel like they can't talk about it, and it gets so much in their own head, and because they've not expressed anything about it, they're convincing themselves that it's okay to do these drastic measures like hurting themselves or or taking their own life and I just wanted to let everyone know that you do not have to do that okay there's always a silver lining to every situation and that's what's been keeping me going so this isn't something that I comfortably talk about I've only ever told my closest friends um, the issues I've gone through in school and college and my medication and things like that but I'm gonna lay it all out on the table fresh for the public to see because I feel like this will help in some sort of self-reflection as well as um, honesty towards my viewers. So, depression started from a very early age for me. When I was first diagnosed with ADHD and I was medicated for it in school, I had to readjust my whole life because I have a neurological disorder. That's what ADHD is. It stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So the attention deficit is not being able to concentrate in school and getting constantly distracted. And then the hyperactivity disorder basically heightens everything. I would be energetic, moving my arms around constantly, throwing things across the class, shouting random things, making stupid noises, just general disruptiveness. And it would get to the point where I was always getting sent out. And school, I, I would have been eventually expelled had I not been medicated. So the medication did work, but it also changed my core personality. And because of that, I was too young to understand what was happening to me, and it caused a very, very slow but long spiral into depression. For, for whatever reason, I was quite popular in school, but not for the right reasons. It was all for the wrong reasons. I was getting bad attention from people, and people were egging me on, goading me to do worse things and I would always do it because I love entertaining people I always have I, I was never happy unless other people were happy but over time when I was medicated my personality was altered I was a lot quieter 
more docile. I had no desire for confrontation or to make people laugh. I wasn't eating properly. Um, my whole lifestyle had changed and because of this I was too young to realise what was really happening to me. So as time went on and I was still on my medication I eventually got into college. When I was in college I started to notice I was feeling more confident in myself and around other people. My anxieties were no longer a, a driving factor in my life and I could actually express myself in the way that I truly intended to in the first place. So I made a lot of friends, I gained a lot of confidence, uh, I even started to date a little bit in college and th I kind of think that's where a lot of it spiralled down because I was struggling with a lot of sexuality issues, not knowing if I was straight or gay or bi or whatever. Right, and to this day, it's still something that I'm unsure about, but doesn't actually bother me now. I, I've come to terms with who I am and what I like, and it, it's, it's not something that I <laughs> stay awake up at night anymore with. Now, the first time I ever felt truly depressed was when I was about 13 years old. I was sat just eating breakfast at the dinner table, you know, just, just the normal morning, and then out of nowhere. I just began to cry, and I don't mean like cry as in a couple of tears came down. My, my, you know, my lip was going, and I was shaking. Just truly felt distraught. And uh, when my mother asked me what was wrong, I just told her that uh, I no longer want to be here. I can't go on living. I, I, I just want to be dead. I came off my medication in the second year of college. This was medication for my ADHD. When I came off this medication, everything felt so much more clearly to me. So what started to happen was I became really, really overconfident. And I was starting to date a few girls. It never went well. Quite a lot of rejection. One girl used me to get another guy and I was too naive to even notice at the time but also because of having to readjust to society after coming off my medication I was overwhelmed by all these new surroundings and I wasn't adjusting to it properly I wasn't taking everything in and I wasn't studying anymore in the second year I had completely stopped studying I, d I refused to do any of the work I did performing arts which is singing, dancing and acting and since all three of those are physical criteria, I would have not have passed had it been for the physical aspect. I, I, used, I used to spend my days just making people laugh and you know making sure everyone's having a good time. But then I would go home at the end of the day and I would just like cry myself to sleep. I, I acted like I was better than everyone, that I didn't need anyone in my life and that no matter what anyone ever said to me, I didn't care because I knew that I was better than them. It was thoughts like this that truly, truly took me to a dark, dark, toxic place. A place where uh, I, I struggled to come back from. I'm not going to lie, there were times where I had planned out how and where I would kill myself. And I always made sure it was in this place that was far away. Because by the time I'd actually walked out there to go and kill myself, I'd already had the time to think about it and I always changed my mind. Unfortunately there are people that go through this same thing and uh, they don't have time to reflect. They don't have time to think about their actions or how it might affect other people and, and that's I think that's very important to remember is how it will affect your loved ones. My advice if I were to give any would be do something in your life even for just an hour that can take your mind away from everything and what I mean by that is something that you enjoy doing that doesn't make you think oh well I'm gonna be depressed after this because I found ice skating was really my savior once I'd lost all of my friends because of my depression and because of my overconfident ways and pretending I was better than everyone and acting like I didn't need anyone. I pushed everyone away. I lost all of my friends and it took two to three years to get 
everyone back. There were some people who I didn't get back and I think that was partly just because we moved on after college but mainly because I was the way I was and I don't really understand to this day why I went off the way I did. I guess I was seeking validation in places where I wasn't going to get it and that just caused me to be even more toxic than before. I really 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 had to rewire my brain completely to get to the point where I am today where I'm I wouldn't say confident in front of talking in front of a camera but it doesn't bother me as much as what it used to. Depression is something that we all suffer from and you can seek help for it through personal meditation or exercise, diet, studying, going out with friends. There are other ways too but I'm sure you'll figure that out as, as you go on and you learn more. I, I don't want to be giving too much of advice or telling people what to do because if I give the wrong advice and I say I'm confident in what I believe in and you believe that too and you end up hurting yourself or someone you love then that comes back on me. In that mindset when you are really dark, deep in that pit of hell and you think to yourself I would be better off dead. It's hard to think logically with a mind that wants to end its existence. Humans and all creatures on this planet have a base instinct for survival and when you take away that instinct for survival you can become a very dangerous individual and I think that's when you need to check up on yourself and actually say I'm not well I have a problem and I alone cannot change it and I need help I need help from someone someone that I know I can trust and when you start opening a dialogue, that is when I feel that you can build a foundation upon, you know, just stepping stones. Little, little, it's just the little victories in each day. I didn't cry myself to sleep last night. You know, it's things like that. Some of you may laugh at that, like, because I used to do that almost every night. I would, I would just be completely distraught, totally, totally emotionally unbalanced. And that was the whole thing about the uh, readjustment into society, like having to act normal and, and, and be a certain way so that other people could understand what I'm going through. And communication is very important in these situations. If you cannot actually express how you feel and try and show someone how you feel, because there is nothing worse than feeling alone on this planet because it can be the worst feeling ever doesn't matter where you are you could be in a room full of 200 people and you would still feel like nobody cares nobody's looking at you and it got to the point where I hated myself so much that I covered it up by pretending that I hated everyone else and that I loved myself I was just no nobody has any idea what it's like for someone with mental health issues, to be going through depression, unless you have experienced it yourself. And even then, it is a person to person experience. My experience is not your experience, and vice versa. It's important to meet other people who have depression or have gone through depression and to just talk and, and open up a dialogue and say, here are my experiences, here's how it affected me and here's what I did to get better. And, and knowing that people can go through such hardships and come out of it a better person I think makes you stronger than what you were when you went into it so just know that there is always someone that will listen and that's where I want to end today's video I would just like to say if you watching the video feel like you're depressed and you don't have a family member or a friend or a colleague or any anyone at all to talk to Go down onto my Twitter in the description below. Send me a message and you can talk to me. Talk to me about your problems. And even if you don't want any input back or you just want someone to listen or to read what you're going through, I will make sure that I make the time to get to know my audience or to anyone who's watching who 
is, is just come here and, and want, want some help because I know how important it is to get better and to want to get better, to want to change and to want to actually live your life without suffering. Thank you and I will see you again soon.